So uh, just to let you guys know, I'm wearing my sunglasses to remind myself that there's a lot more to spring than just a proliferation of masses of antagonists to your allergies. <laughs> so when you hear me coughing, it's not contagious. It's just me enjoying spring. <laughs> so, All right. So uh, first question, um, uh, I believe we have the video. I thought we should uh, start... Um, we should start with the end in mind. So are we able to play the video? Got it? How do you feel about mom? She's awesome. It works really hard at us. When I left home, um, it's, it was because my mom didn't feel safe there. Without her strengths or her courage, I think we would still be living in the shelter. Making sure that we were okay and that we had a place to sleep. I bet that there were some times when she probably didn't even sleep at all. My mom was sad, but she like, well, I think she was sad, but she never showed it really much. She was scared. She inspires me a lot because she is, she's really passionate about what she does. She gets the job done. I got to be macaroni and cheese. I love her determination to get us through these hard times and help us become the people that we are today. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I wanted you to know that I really love you. I really admire your strength. You have been one tough cookie. I want everything good for you. I love having you with my mom. Anyway, you know, the, the big surprising thing about this is that these are the children of our clients. And, oh, you're amazing. I is, love you. I knew I'd season, love this woman. Season. Yeah, we're sitting here. We're both allergic. Anyway, so hooray for spring. Uh, you know, this project really stunned and amazed me because... Um, it's showing us that, that, that we are doing the right thing in our program, and I'll explain the program. I won't have enough time to explain the campaign, um, but I was utterly surprised to see the number of children who wanted to come forward to honor their mothers. They were so proud, and they self-documented, and you're going to see even more of that, because on Sunday, the National is doing a feature on us, and they're doing a feature on these kids, as well as more mothers and their children, which you will see. It's unbelievably touching. I I hope you enjoy. Uh, in the meantime, I'll talk to you about uh, Up With Women because that's what I'm here for, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, uh, Up With Women, you know, I don't come from a nonprofit background. I come from lived experience. So I used to be a homeless teenager, and just to give you some very quick, a, a very quick background, you know, I fled violence. And, uh, and I didn't think that my life would amount to anything. I, in order to be able to never be vulnerable again, I quit high school. I still have a grade 10 math education, grade 11, everything else. And nobody was going to beat a path to my door. But because nobody ever came into my shelter to say, look where I am now. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, an astrophysicist, you know, whatever. And I used to be homeless. So you can get here. Uh, I, I made a promise on my shelter bed that I would be that person, I would, I would become successful, quote unquote, in the standard idea, and I'll explain why, and then I will come back and help other women to rebuild their lives faster than I did. I needed to reach the media. I needed the media to share my story, so I needed to make my story into one of those things that the media would take seriously. You know how narrow the media's interest is, sorry if there's any media here, but uh, you know, typically rags to riches stories, if you don't have an education, you can't be a lawyer a doctor and astrophysicist, then, you know, my only pathway to a quote-unquote success story was really to make a lot of money or to become an entrepreneur. And, uh, and so I, um, uh, that's what I, I resolved to do. And so I climbed the corporate ladder, underqualified for every single job I went for. Everything was asking for a BA or uh, a BA required, MBA preferred, and I didn't have any of that. Um, but I managed to build my career. Uh, th the only problem is it took me 10 years to get back to the starting line, right? And we need to get there faster. I, um, the last corporate job I held, 
uh, I had launched up with women while I was still in a corporate job, and uh, I was regional head of financial services for the Americas for division of TIBCO, which is a billion-dollar technology firm. So, um, you know, I'd gotten there. I'd gotten there, but it didn't really matter. The money didn't matter. The, the position didn't matter. All that mattered was what it was going to do as far as reaching the invisible homeless, because before I was a visible homeless, I was invisible. I was couch surfing, and anyone who thinks that couch surfing isn't real homelessness, you know, imagine being a young woman. The typical person who's going to offer you a couch is typically a man. Then you're behind their locked door. I lost my virginity to rape as a result of being a, an invisible homeless. Right? It was um, uh, more dangerous than anything. The, the shelter was like reaching heaven, really. So um, anyway, to get back to the story, you know, it took me 10 years to get back to the starting line. And this is what we know with homelessness. You know, the barriers to return are so incredibly... Uh, significant, y you know. I mean, even when we're looking at the, did you guys, did anyone ever see that hundred city study where they um, sent fake resumes out to companies in a hundred different cities, and they found that uh, even an, uh, a, a career break of four months could drastically reduce your chances of a callback. If it was eight months or more, it was down below four percent. And uh, you know, that's just with everyday people. Nobody's going to explain on their resume that I fled violence and I was in a shelter and this is why I have this career break. You're not going to do that. No matter how much the law protects you, you know, there, there will be bias. There will be stigma. And so my job was really, you, you know, and then we look at the, the statistics of, um, of women in, in shelters. Everyone remember the Better Off in a Shelter study with uh, Emily Paradis? Uh, where they found that while most of the women were gainfully employed before ending up in the shelter, the majority of them, 70% were employed before being in the shelter, 70% were dependent on some form of government assistance a year after being in the shelter. So you put those two studies together and it really does give you a clear picture that there are significant barriers that we can't even really measure. We try, but we can't. We'll never be able to truly measure the impact of homelessness because, especially with women and families, there's a lot of invisible homeless, right? So uh, back to where I, um, I started up with women, basically, you know, the, the challenge that we have in our sector, and we all know this, is that the sector is incredibly um, challenged. There, there's, there's not enough money. There will never be enough money to be able to overcome those barriers. And so what we do is we engage the pro bono services of certified leadership coaches. These are women who are usually in the upper echelons, the people that I got to have when I finally got up there, when I didn't really need a coach, that's when I got it. I could have used the coach when I was homeless. And uh, because they're four and five hundred dollars an hour, what I d what we did was we decided to to help them to commit each one to serving one woman for a year, and so you know that did an enormous amount of of change because you know to be able to have a strategic partner for an entire year to be able to rebuild your career, as we know, so many women are incredibly qualified, incredibly qualified, but their barriers prevent them from being able to get back. So we want to be able to make them into career ninjas so that they can be able to get back and be able to rebuild their lives. And what's interesting is all those children, every single one of their mothers is also an entrepreneur. They're doing two things. We make sure that we are covering both career and we're covering business for those people who want to become entrepreneurs because the strategy really should be, especially when you're in poverty, find a job that's going to sustain you and build that business as well. Right? It's not one or the other. Uh, it's if you want just a career, it's just a career. But you know, if you want to build a business, you can't just build a business, right? So, um, and the results have been incredible. Uh, you know, until we actually are serving hundreds of women, we won't have reliable statistics. But the last two cohorts that, we, that we've done, where we've actually done some pretty significant uh, evaluation, the results have even surprised us. Um, uh, while 72% of the women had accessed other employment programs before they came to us. 83% were still unemployed. Within six months, that was down to 30%. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, in the, uh, you know, that they're not precariously employed. They're still, they've got jobs, but we still have a long way to go. Still, it was down to 30%. 64% were living in deep poverty, which is basically welfare level. That was cut down to 36% in six months. 
uh, all of them were living in poverty, 18% had already exited poverty. But again, you know, really in examining the data is really critical because you want to be able to understand um, you know, what that means. The women weren't living the, the kind of careers that they should be having. They were overworked, underpaid still, but they had exited poverty because they had multiple jobs. So, you know, there's not enough time to be able to really explain to you what we do, but, you know, please join, you know, go to our website and, uh, and have a look. But what I can tell you, uh, what I want to leave you with is that there is one strategy, one thing that we found that has been really critically important to being able to help these women to accelerate as quickly as possible. Every single woman comes into our program, and it has nothing to do with the coaches, by the way. The coaches are amazing, but this is the magic sauce, and any anti-poverty organization can apply this. Every woman who comes into our organization comes in with the desire to never see another woman go through what she went through. There is a fire there. There is a fire. And it really depends on how we're able to approach what has happened to us, because it really isn't about what happened to us. It's about how far we've come and where we're going. This is what we want the women to focus on. And so we really emphasize, even in the interview stage, that this isn't just about being able to make your life for yourself and your family, but it's also to be able to build your life into that story that can inspire somebody else to believe that they can have it too. Ultimately, it makes their goals bigger than themselves. And the beautiful thing that happens there, just like what happened with me on my shelter bed, it ceases to be personal. Any rejection is no longer personal. It's about the mission. Any disappointment is no longer personal. It's about the mission. So what happens? That emotional drawback uh, it is stopped. And what's amazing is the women who really hook into this, they go like firecrackers. It's unbelievable to see how fast. And this is why these children came on TV, came on, you know, they're going to be on the national. The mothers came forward because they're also very driven to be those success stories right now, even while they're rebuilding. And uh, so, you know, that's incredible. But, you know, the other thing that is really important for every single one of us to communicate to everybody and to communicate to ourselves as well, there are no success stories without a story of overcoming. No success stories without a story of overcoming. So any woman who comes into our program, we tell them, you've already written half of your story. Now let's get to the other half. So that, you know, I wish we had more time, but uh, this is where we, uh, we can leave it off. Hopefully this is helpful. And um, reach out to me if you need to. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you.